Wow, there's sure a lot of stars up there. Yeah, and just think, each one is a sun just like ours. And many of them have planets orbiting them. Plus, there are tons of objects we cannot see without a telescope, like galaxies and nebulas and star clusters. How can we find where to look for them? Star maps and catalogs of space objects. It makes stargazing easier. Hundreds of years ago, astronomers just searched the skies until they found stuff. Then they noted it and cataloged it. So today, we can just look things up to find them. Of course, there are also new things to be discovered, like comets. They're not on a star map. Yeah, a fun hobby astronomers have is just searching the skies for new things, and that is how they find new comets. A lot of comets are discovered in someone's own backyard. Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... Distinctly Yukon, the Westmark Whitehorse Hotel and Conference Center is the Yukon's premier lodging facility. Make your reservations today at westmarkhotels.com. Westmark Hotels, with nine unique locations throughout Alaska and the Yukon. One of the most important tools for any astronomer is a star map. With all the stars up there, it's easy to get lost, but a star map will always help you find things. And the sky is always changing as Earth moves. So a star map will tell you what's up in the sky at any given time. There are two main movements that we have to account for. First is the rotation of the Earth. As the Earth rotates, it appears the stars move across the sky. So stars that are seen in the evening sky in the east will be in the west in the morning. It is the same movement we see with the sun every day, rising in the east and setting in the west. Let's pretend it is the middle of December, at 7 o'clock in the evening. If you look east, you will see the constellation Orion, just coming up. By midnight, Orion will be halfway across the sky. And at around 5 in the morning, Orion will be setting in the west. The Earth also moves around the sun, so the stars you see at one time is not seen during other times. They do not go anywhere. It is just because the Earth is on the other side of the sun from them. The sun is so bright that we cannot see the stars during the day, but they are out there. So the first thing you need to remember to do is set your star map for the current day and time. And don't do what Herc did and use the star map for our northern hemisphere when you were in Australia. <laughs> yeah, that was embarrassing. But hey, wait a minute. You handed me that star map. <laughs> but the funny part is that you actually tried to use it. South of the equator, you need to use a southern hemisphere star map, because since the Earth is a sphere, the south side of the Earth sees a completely different night sky. We'll discuss that a little later, but now let's learn about finding these objects too hard to see with the naked eye. Deep space objects. After the advent of telescopes, astronomers started seeing all kinds of things in the sky that they were unable to see before. They began to document what they found. Most of these objects appeared as fuzzy patches, which they started to call nebula, which is a Latin word meaning cloud or mist. By 1758, a man by the name of Charles Messier in France was using his telescope to try and find the return of Halley's Comet. But he had been given faulty information and was looking in the wrong part of the sky. He thought he discovered a new comet in the constellation Taurus, but soon realized it was not moving. It was a nebula. On September 12, 1758, Messier entered his find into a brand new catalog he was creating. He called the object M1. He called the catalog the Catalog of Nebula and Star Clusters, which one discovers between the fixed stars over the horizon of Paris, observed at the Observatory of the Navy with different instruments. He published his catalog in 1774 with 45 objects in it listed from M1 to M45. He added M46 through M68 in 1783. Messier himself cataloged up through M103. Additions were later added, 
and today there are 110 objects in the official Messier catalog. Today, stargazers everywhere use the Messier catalog as the main source for finding deep sky objects one could see with a backyard telescope. Hey Velocity, want to play a cool astronomy game? Yeah! Okay, then use your telescope to find all 110 Messier objects. All of them? But that would take like a year, Hark! You're right. You can only see certain ones at certain times of the year as the Earth moves around the Sun. But if you look during the whole year, you can eventually find them all. Okay. You're on. I'll find all of them. Another astronomer at the time was William Herschel. Like Messier, one day he too thought he found a comet. But his discovery turned out to be not a comet or nebula, but a planet. Uranus. On March 13, 1781, Herschel discovered the planet Uranus, and six years later discovered two of its moons, Titania and Oberon. He also discovered two moons of Saturn, Mimas and Enceladus. When Herschel got a copy of Messier's catalog, he decided to make a catalog. So he and his sister, Caroline, started to search the night sky. They found over 2,500 objects. About 100 years later, the British Royal Astronomical Society had Herschel's catalog updated and named the New General Catalog. It now had 7,840 objects. And they even added to that with the Index Catalog. The Index Catalog added another 5,386 more objects. Star maps and charts will have objects located on them using a code of M for Messier, NGC for New General Catalog, or IC for Index Catalog, followed by a number. Here is the constellation Taurus. Note that along with the stars, there are a few objects mapped. By finding Taurus with our eyes, then locating where the objects are from the map, we know where to aim our scope to find them. See M1 on the map? Remember that is the first entry Messier made. Taurus is a bull and here is his horns. At the end of the lower horn is a star and right on top of that star is M1. M1 is the Crab Nebula. You will also see some other objects. NGC 1746 and NGC 1647. Look them up in the catalog and you will find that they are both open clusters of stars. There are two types of star clusters, open clusters and globular clusters. As you can see, globular clusters contain many more stars and are densely packed. Globular cluster stars are also older stars than open cluster stars. You can also find out how bright these objects are and how far away they are and more if you have a good star guidebook. Aldebaran is that big bright star that represents one of the eyes of the bull. It is a magnitude 0.85. Magnitude tells you how bright the star is in the sky. The lower the number, the brighter the object. Objects with magnitudes higher than about 6 are too faint to see with the naked eye. M1, the Crab Nebula, has a magnitude of 8.4. It is above 6, so you need a telescope to see it. Aldebaran is 65 light years away, and M1 is 6,500 light years away. That means that the Crab Nebula is 100 times farther away from us than Aldebaran is. So, a good star map and a good star guidebook will make it fun and educational as you explore the night sky. If you travel from one hemisphere to the other, the stars and constellations all change. Because the Earth is curved, stars you see in the northern hemisphere cannot be seen in the southern hemisphere and vice versa. Probably the most famous southern constellation is the Southern Cross. It is so famous it is on the flags of Australia and New Zealand. There is no South Star like there is a North Star, so most people use the Southern Cross as a start point. But it is hard to find and is small. Face south and find two bright stars on the horizon, Beta Centauri and Alpha Centauri. And yes, that is indeed the Alpha Centauri system that is the closest star to Earth outside our own Sun. It is actually three stars, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is the closest to Earth. 
Draw a line between Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri, and up a little ways, and there is the Southern Cross. The bottom of the cross then points the way to the Southern Celestial Pole, the point where all the Southern stars revolve around. In the north there is the North Star, Polaris, but in the south there is no such South Star. Here in the Southern Hemisphere, you will find constellations like Lupus and Norma. And you will find the nebula like the Tarantula Nebula. <laughs> and only in the Southern Hemisphere can you see the large Magellanic Cloud, even with the naked eye. It is a satellite galaxy to our own Milky Way, and only 180,000 light years away. Be sure to watch Like a Sky Watch right here on Let's Explore Astronomy. <laughs> There we will tell you about the cool things in both the northern and southern skies. Let's find some cool objects. Are you sure you have the right star map this time, Herc? Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.